Hello everybody, I'm Jana from Sydney Visa. In recent news, we reported that the Australian government had allocated a large quota for partner visas in 2020-21 uh, financial year. This is a great opportunity for those who are planning to move to Australia with their significant other to start acting now. Therefore, in this video, I'll give you general information about the types of partner visas and their costs. I will talk about the general requirements for the applicants and the sponsors, talk about the documents that you need to uh, provide to the department, and we'll touch on the upcoming changes. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, I'll ask you to do it now and to like, our, uh, to like this and other videos. We put a lot of effort in preparing content for you that is not available anywhere else and we'll be very grateful if you would uh, support us. Okay, first let's look at the types of partner visas. Um, there are three types of partner visas to Australia. Uh, one is prospective marriage visa, subclass 300, uh, then partner visa subclass 309-100 and partner visa subclass 820-801. Both partner visas assume that your relationship with your partner is official, that is, you're married, no matter in which country, or that you are de facto, in de facto relationship, which is officially registered. The only difference between subclass 309-100 and um, 820-801 is where you apply for the visa. So um, subclass 309-100 is applied for from outside Australia and the waiting for the visa decision takes place outside of Australia. 820-801 uh, um, is filed in Australia uh, and with the bridging visa generated upon lodgement, which gives you the right to remain in the country while waiting for the decision on your partner visa. Prospective marriage visa is for those who are planning or just planning to um, officially get married. The prospective marriage visa is a temporary visa valid for nine months during which you must formalize your relationship and then apply for a partner visa in Australia. So because you will be applying from within Australia, the partner visa you'll be applying for is A20801. So uh, when you apply for a partner visa, whether inside or outside Australia, you are submitting two applications in one. Uh, for the temporary visa, which is the 820 or 309, and the subsequent permanent visa, which is the 801 or 100 part. After applying for the temporary visa, a two-year waiting period begins. After two years, you can then apply for a permanent residence visa. There is no additional fee at this stage, but you do need to provide additional information to the department confirming the integrity and longevity of your relationship. Um, how are we going to do how to do this? I will talk at a later stage. The cost of applying um, for partner visa, A20 or 801 or 309 100, um, is as follows. So it's 7,715 uh, Australian dollars, the application fee. Plus, uh, there is a compulsory medical examination, which depending on the country might cost around 400 uh, Australian dollars. Plus, uh, you will need to provide two police certificates, uh, both for yourself and your sponsor, which Again, depends on the country, but roughly around $50 each. The cost uh, for applying for prospective marriage visa, the 300 visa, uh, is also 7,715 is the application fee upon lodgement, um, plus medical examination, plus the police certificate, plus, uh, but then on top you will pay a fee of $1,285 for your subsequent partner visa. So after the, within the nine months after you get married, you can then apply for your partner visa and then you will need to pay this additional fee. An additional application fee is also payable for each family member who applies for the visa with you and this is mostly uh, your children if you have um, children from previous marriage and who are not Australian citizens. Please note, which is quite important, that in case of visa refusal, uh, those costs are not refunded and we're talking about roughly about $10,000 after you take into account your translation of the documents and so forth. Therefore, it's very important to uh, prepare your document in such a way as to, minima to minimize the possibility of visa refusal. Unfortunately, the sincerity of your relationship is not always a guarantee of a successful application. 
the department views each claim with the presumption of guilt, so to speak. That is from the position that you are trying to deceive the department. And it is your job to prove them wrong and to prove them otherwise. It's best to engage an experienced agent uh, who will help you prepare a complete and rigorous documents for your submission. Our company has been operating in the Australian market for over 20 years, so we have completed countless um, of successful partner visa applications. The cost of our partner visa application assistance is currently 2,900 Australian dollars. And at the moment, this is a significant discount. The usual cost of this service is $5,800. So what are the requirements for the applicants? So the person for apply, who is applying for the partner visa. Uh, to be able to apply for a visa, the, the applicant must be over 18 years of age and have a spouse, groom or sponsor uh, who is an Australian citizen or, or Australian permanent resident or an eligible New, New Zealand citizen. By the way, applicants uh, with the same sex relationships are also, also eligible for partner visa, which I have mentioned earlier. Uh, the applicant needs to undergo medical examination and not have any serious illness or disability. Uh, also, the applicant would need to prove, uh, provide a police certificate indicating that he or she didn't have any serious problems with the law in any other country that the person had lived in. Um, also note that previous Australian visa refusals do not affect your eligibility um, to apply for a partner visa. So if your partner visa application has been refused before, you are able to apply for a new one without a problem. You just need to pay for it again. Um, and same goes for tourist visas So if any or any other type of visas to Australia. So if you have a refusal um, without a ban, uh, but just a general refusal of a visa, that shouldn't affect your application. Uh, a word of warning though, every time you apply for an Australian visa, the information you provide in the application is kept by the department pretty much forever. So when you're making a subsequent application, um, please be mindful uh, of that information and mindful that the information you provide this does not contradict with any other information that you've provided earlier. Okay, let's look at the sponsor requirements. Um, well, first of all, the sponsor must be over 18 years of age and say Australian citizen, PR resident or um, eligible New Zealand citizen. Um, also, there are two types of limitations that exist uh, for sponsors of partner visas. One is previous sponsorships and two is the history of registrable offences. The limitation that exists uh, on the partner visa sponsorship is essentially to prevent a person from sponsoring multiple partners. So if you have sponsored a person in the past uh, for partner visa, you would have to wait five years before you can sponsor again. And the maximum number of times that you can sponsor anybody is two. Um, so what, does, what is counted as sponsoring a person as being sponsored? So let's have a look at some examples. If the sponsorship was granted, but the applicant didn't travel to Australia, it's still counted. Um, you have essentially sponsored a person and it doesn't matter that the applicant didn't travel to Australia. Um, also, if a prospective marriage visa was granted, but the wedding didn't take place, it also counts as using one of your sponsorships. However, if you put a sponsorship application, but the visa application is refused, in that case, the sponsorship application is not counted. The department may um, waiver the limitation if compelling circumstances are affecting the sponsor. Um, the second limitation is registrable offence. Um, that's another critical assessment conducted by the department on the sponsorship application. So is the sponsor's character, right? So the sponsorship application is usually refused if a police check indicates that the sponsor has a conviction or outstanding charge for a registrable offence. Um, so uh, what is considered to be a registrable offence? Well, broadly speaking, registrable offences are serious offences, and this include child abuse, murder of a child, causing uh, grievous bodily harm to a child, and uh, child pornography possession. Also, uh, your sponsorship might be refused if you have a history of domestic violence directed at a partner. In some circumstances, those um, above provisions, the first and the second, may be waived by DHA. 
um, by the department. Um, the, this waivers can be extremely complicated. It involves um, writing a submission to the department with the supporting documents, um, addressing all the relevant criteria. So if you need help with this, contact us today and we'll see if we can help you with your waiver submission. As I mentioned above, the department use partner visa applications with a presumption of guilt. Um, and it's, your, it's up to you to prove the department wrong and demonstrate that your relationship is genuine. So what proof do you need to demonstrate the sincerity and seriousness of your relationship? Please be mindful that every relationship is unique and there is no universal recipe for all couples. But there is a standard set of documents considered by the immigration department um, that, that do prove your relationship. First of all is the statutory declarations from people who are Australian citizens or permanent residents and they uh, know you and the partner and know about your relationship. Second is the proof that you and your partner have met face to face and know each other personally. So if you have only met over the phone, over, over the internet, you are not qualified for partner visa. You will need to meet up first. Um, also, uh, written statements showing the history of your relationship, describing how, when and where you first met, how your relationship developed, when you became married, when you moved together. So basically it is your, this, your written um, story um, about your relationship where you just describe everything in quite a bit of detail. Um, if you are married, you obviously need to provide your marriage certificate or um, you can show uh, the de facto registration certificate if it was done in Australia. Um, if, you are de if you are a de facto partner, provide proof uh, of the de, de facto relationship and this proof should show that you have a mutual commitment with your partner to the exclusion of all others. Or relationship is genuine and continuing and you either live together or don't live permanently apart. Other, docu other documents that can be um, put put forward to the department in support of your submission are things like joint mortgage or lease documents, um, joint loan documents, um, joint bank account statements, house school bills, bills that are in both names, um, statements about how you share household, housework, household work, um, mails and emails addressed to, to your both, um, documents that show joint responsibility for the children if you have them, um, joint invitations um, and evidence that you go out together, prove you have common friends, prove that you travel together, prove, prove that you stay in touch when you're apart. So there is quite a lot of things that you can provide to the department to show um, the genuinity of your relationship. But as I said, Every relationship is unique and you communicate differently, you stay together, you do things sort of differently. So the, the package of the documents is decided um, in, individual case, in, in individual case by case basis. There is a new requirement for uh, partner visa applicants. Applicants and sponsors will be required to pass an English language requirement. The aim of this um, test is to promote social cohesion and economic participation. Whilst the full details of the English language requirement are not yet released, uh, we are expecting the following that come in, in effect on the 1st of July 2021. Um, one is the required level of English ability will be functional, uh, which means it's equivalent of IELTS 4.4. Um, holders of English speaking holders of passports of English speaking countries like USA, Canada, UK, and Ireland will be exempt from this requirement. Uh, English level ability will be demonstrated upon application for permanent visa. So it's uh, not on your initial application for your temporary visa, it is when you apply for a visa 100 or 801. Um, an alternative to an English test language will be the fact that uh, the applicant undertakes 500 hours of English language classes, which are free for the holders of contemporary partner visas. 
uh, permanent resident sponsors will be required to show the same level of English level proficiency as the visa applicant. So if your sponsor is an Australian citizen, he doesn't need to show English. Only the ones that are on the PR visa will need to demonstrate the language ability. This is it for now. If you have any questions, if I miss something, uh, please ask them in the comment section below and we will try to answer them. And uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel to support us and cheers from down under. Goodbye.